This week's Muscle Car of the Week is a 1971 Olds 442 drop top W30 outside air induction hood in a very rare color. Nineteen seventy was a really crazy time for muscle cars. Uh, General Motors, in particular, lifted their cubic inch ban uh, from four hundred up to the sky's the limit. So for seventy, you saw Chevrolet going to four fifty four. You saw Pontiac go to four fifty five. Buick to four fifty five. Oldsmobile to four hundred fifty five cubic inches. And with the higher compression ratios, a nineteen seventy W thirty Cutlass made three hundred and seventy horsepower. 500 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, these were awesome, fun, fast cars to drive. But by 1971, things started to change. Uh, there were several factors at play. Uh, because these cars were so fun to drive, people went out and street raced them and crashed them and wrecked them and had a great time, which meant insurance rates went up. So the buying public wised up to the fact that, you know, increased insurance premiums meant a higher ownership uh, cost after you bought the car. So the manufacturers were trying to uh, reduce those power numbers to make the cars more affordable, plus the fact we started to see some emissions control equipment choking the power down by 1971. And there's a third factor that came into play for 71, and that is that the horsepower ratings switched from a gross rating, which was basically the engine on a stand by itself, screaming wide open, uh, to a net rating, which meant they put the accessories on it, the alternator, the water pump, uh, air conditioning pumps, you know, whatever was going to be on the car, in the car, and that brought the power numbers down. And in the case of our 71 W30 Cutlass convertible, uh, we see the power from 1970 at 370 horsepower go down to a net advertised of 270 horsepower. So it was a real, you know, kick in the pants for these things to drop those numbers that radically between 70 and 71. But in the reality, the gross number only fell to 350 horsepower, and that's primarily because of the drop in compression ratio from 10.3 down to 8.5 to 1. So the 71 was still a great performing car, it just wasn't quite, you know, the power that the 1970 car had. The car we're looking at today is uh, kind of a neat one in the Brothers collection. They made about 110 442 W30 convertibles in 1971. This one's got a unique color. It's called Bittersweet. It's code 62. Uh, it's kind of a mix between an orange and a brown. It's got a black convertible top and black interior uh, and the black uh, W30 stripes. The 442 package was the sporty version of a Cutlass, and of course the W30 added a few elements um, and actually made the car a little bit lighter. Uh, it starts off with the 455 cubic inch V8. This one's got a turbo 400 automatic transmission, uh, but the W30 elements included a special camshaft. It's a slightly longer duration, 472 thousandths lift cam. Compression ratios dropped in 1971, but the Olds 455 W30 motor still made a bunch of power. About 280 horsepower, 370 foot-pounds of torque. And there's a lot of unique things that make this Oldsmobile package pretty interesting. Uh, of course, the red fender wells, which were a 442 staple for years. And this one has the outside air induction hood and matching vacuum-operated air door on the uh, carburetor. And if you ever see one of these Oldsmobiles with the outside air induction hood, a quick and easy way to see if it's an original factory one is if the bottom structure is steel and the top outer skin is fiberglass. Uh, the reproductions are all fiberglass and these hoods are starting to fetch a pretty penny now. This one's got its original hood and uh, the W30's got its aluminum intake and high performance parts. Uh, but being an Oldsmobile, it was still a, a, a nice civil car to drive, even though by 71, you were still running high 14, low 15 second quarter mile. They did a few other things to lighten the weight. They reduced the amount of sound deadener in these cars, so they were a little bit lighter. 
Uh, one of the super rare options is the W27 rear differential cover, which is an aluminum rear differential cover. Uh, the hood shaved about 18 pounds off the car, the aluminum intake about 22 pounds. Uh, they also had a specially tuned quadrajet carburetor, free-flowing exhaust, and a vacuum-operated free-flowing uh, air cleaner assembly to give these things that power. I always like the look of these outside air induction hoods with the aggressive dual scoops in the front. And Olds had these neat hood pins built in. It was a twist latch that uh, would lock the thing in place. Uh, the, the Cutlass itself was a great driving car to begin with, but these are reinforced with high performance sway bars, front and rear, special shock absorbers. The rear suspension has fully boxed lower control arms uh, to mount that rear sway bar, and the upper control arms have a, uh, a special brace that attaches to the frame to keep that rear end from walking under hard acceleration. Uh, they also have what's called an anti-spin differential limited slip, uh, 342 gear in this one. So just out driving around, you know, these cars were great, not only in a straight line, um, but they handled really well. They had 10.9-inch uh, power disc brakes in front on this one, 9.5-inch uh, rear power drums, so they stopped nice. Uh, overall, these GM A-body platforms, and these Cutlasses in particular, and the 442s are great driving cars. You could get just about any option you wanted on a 442, but this one has a surprisingly few amount of them. It's got an AM radio, uh, it's got heat but no AC, uh, column shift, a bench seat, doesn't have the gauge pack, it's got your basic speedo and the collection of uh, idiot lights for you know, temperature and fuel and volts, no tack, uh, just kind of a basic car. Some collections only focus on the best, most powerful, you know, most rare version of a particular muscle car. They seem to have them all in the Brothers collection. And I think I read somewhere that Motor Trend said the 1971 Oldsmobile W30 uh, was a victim of a, uh, a Dr. Oldsmobile malpractice suit, and that's why it had to have less power than 1970. Uh, doesn't really matter to me. I think this car is super cool. Uh, the color is kind of controversial, which only makes it more rare and it is one of the standouts in the Brothers Collection. There's a lot of features on some of these old cars that you forget about, like the key buzzer. When you leave the key in the ignition and open the door, and this one has about the loudest one in history. You can learn more about this car on our website at musclecartheweek.com. Of course, our Facebook page has a place where you can check out the cars, look at previous cars, and even guess what next week's might be. And of course, our YouTube channel is a place where you can subscribe and never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week. I think this thing actually echoes.